Hey guys, this is Jeff with Bauer & Sons. I want to do a real brief walkthrough on a simple pole barn. This guy right here, we put it up in a couple of days. This is a 20 foot wide and 30 foot long. So this is a really simple barn, but we want to show you a little bit on how we actually build our barns and it'll encourage you guys and um, hopefully give you some pointers depending on where you're at. But for every building, um, well, most buildings in most counties, you need to pull a permit and it can be a little intimidating. So just wanna let you know, it's easier than a lot of people think. Now, if you happen to live in a county where your general contractor, your builder is required to have a license, typically that person is going to incorporate the cost of your permit and any permits associated with your building. And they'll put that as part of your bid and it'll be their responsibility. However, for the majority of the Midwest, it's actually not up to the general contractor. It's really up to the homeowner. Every place has their own special set um, of rules and regulations. The majority of them, however, here's all it is on a pole barn. You pull your permit, you put your permit up in the window. When the day of building arrives, the first day, either the homeowner calls or sometimes we will call or your builder will call. First thing they wanna know, they wanna look at those post holes over there and they need to see how deep did they make the post holes. That's the first main and simplest inspection. After they look at the post holes to make sure that they are what your county requires for us here in the Midwest, we actually do ours 48 inches deep and then we put at the bottom of that hole a 16 inch round cement cookie that's actually six inches thick. And then these posts are sitting on top of that cement cookie. Here you can actually only go three feet if you want to. Um, we try to go a little bit deeper just to make a better, just to, to get a better product. After they do that inspection, the inspector actually won't come back until the build, building is done. And the second inspection is typically the framing or the framing and the final done together. So on a pole barn, the inspector wants to come back and he needs to see, did you actually put the trusses and all the bracing according to the engineer design for your trusses? On all the trusses, the engineers say, hey, you're gonna need to put certain supportive cords and bracing on there. Some barns actually require an angle bracing that's gonna come down um, from the truss all the way down to the post. Obviously, if you're doing electric or plumbing, that'll be a secondary thing on your permit. You can see this guy right here. He's got post holes. The inspector came out 7.30. Uh, he's gonna have an electrical rough in. That's somebody else that's gonna do that. He's gonna have his framing and the final. So now that we're finished with the building, the inspector can come out, look at the framing, and then he'll do the framing and the final together once the concrete is all done. It's pretty simple. If you have a good builder, your builder will help you walk through the process and give you any tips, any kind of suggestions that you need. Sometimes you might need to get a variance. The other big thing they're gonna to need to know when you go to pull your permit, they need to know where your building's gonna sit on your property. So you can just simply go on to Google Maps or something, print out a map of your property, and just literally grab a pencil and sketch on there, or you can go onto Google Earth and you can measure it. And you can say, I'm gonna put my building here on my property. And the county, they're gonna want, every place will be different, so they're gonna to wanna to know how far off your property line. Some places it's five feet, 10 feet, 15 feet. That's up to wherever you live. But that's what they're gonna look for. Your builder will help you with that, but don't be intimidated by the process. Couple things for us at Bauer & Sons. We do use uh, Anderson Silver Line windows. We find Anderson to be a good quality window. This is their entry level window, but there are some really cheap, El Cheapo uh, windows that guys can use. Even if it's your barn, spend the extra 50 to $60 or $100. Put yourself in a little better window. Now, when we do our quotes, we actually quote people now, we just this year upgraded to what's called a green post. If you take a look over here, the green post, this actually comes from the factory that the bottom five feet of that post, it has, um, it's been dipped in tar and then it's been wrapped with a special uh, plastic wrap and then that plastic wrap is melted onto the post. It actually goes into a little heater and 
Um, I don't know exactly if they do a full lifetime warranty, but that post is gonna be impervious to termites and any sort of water damage. If you look at old barns, especially here in the Midwest, the number one place you get post rot is right at the ground level. So typically where the dirt is gonna meet that post, that's where you're gonna see it. A couple other things I wanna point out. If you look at our posts over here, these are from Richland, they're actually stamped. You see their little name right here. These posts are a three ply, two by six. Solid block posts will eventually twist and they can crack. The strength of a three ply post is much greater than just a solid block post. The other thing that we do on our buildings, even on a 20 by 30, we do a double truss carrier and it's gonna be a two by 12 truss carrier in every one of our trusses, they have hurricane brackets. They're actually not even required up here in maybe a couple of counties, but they add that little extra. We get a lot of real high winds here in the Midwest, and the biggest uh, danger for damaging a barn is gonna be in a large overhead door, or if this is a sliding door, and the wind is gonna push in here and actually help, and it'll push up on the roof and potentially damage your roof. The way we do our buildings, is we go with a drip stop metal. And you can notice it looks like felt, and that's actually factory installed, and that's gonna help to avoid any wicking. Our wall girts, we typically space every two feet right here, and then our roof purlins are gonna also be spaced two feet. One thing we do on our trusses, we do trusses every four foot on center. Our posts, we do eight foot on center. We always do the double tongue and groove treated lumber down here. Uh, so these are two two by eights. This is actually now set as the grade line. So our excavator just took off. He filled the barn full of sand and he's got this packed down. He had tons of sand. This barn is actually a little bit on a slope here, but now he's gonna come back in, pack this down one more time, lay his rebar out, and then he's gonna basically pour that concrete floor right here. So it's gonna give you four inches off the ground up to, up to the grade line. That's pretty much it. We try to use a high quality product, try to use a high quality lumber from our suppliers, and in the long run, it's gonna make a difference. We really try to not just throw up a barn or build a barn. We're really, what I would tell people is we're trying to build a legacy, a barn that your grandkids can enjoy, something you don't have to worry about in the future. Anyway, that's how we do it. And uh, give us a call if you need some help. We'd love to help build you a barn.